All right, so this video here, we got this 241 DLD transfer case out of a 01 Cummins, and it is having some problems with popping out of gear in two wheel drive. So we're gonna take it apart, see what's wrong with it. Pretty simple to take these things apart. There's four bolts on the tailstock, then it pops off. Then there's one, two, three, four bolts here. Usually a snap ring down underneath here, and then this whole thing will come off. Then you unbolt the case. Take off the drive hub. <clears throat> and then take off the bolts for the input shaft. And then, yeah, they just kind of pop apart. There's some snap rings and stuff you gotta take out. Um, so yeah, let's, uh, let's get her done. Output their tailstock housing off. You can see right here there is a snap ring. So take our snap ring pliers. So it's a little tricky to get in there. four bolts on here is silicone. But it is biting pretty good. There we go.
shuts off. That bearing stays in the house housing. Uh, here you have your pump, so your oil pump for inside. And that'll stay there until you crack the case because there's a pickup tube that comes down from the bottom and goes down into somewhere around in here. So that's where we're at right now. You can see we drained it, but we still got a little bit of fluid left in there. But that's okay. So I'm going to flip it around. Pull this front uh, dry flange off. get a bucket and try to drain the rest of that out. All right, so we got most of the uh, fluid out. So now we're gonna take these bolts out and then the cases will crack apart. case you can see right in here there's like a groove where you can actually put a screwdriver in and pry there's also one on this side so once you're done tapping it you can hear the noise change and that means it's cracking loose come in with a little pry bar There's also two dowels in the end holes. That side. So now if you have the two case halves loosened, you gotta lift them both up at one time because there's a rod right here that slides in and there's two dowels on the end. So if you go sideways, it's gonna bind. So there's that, you can see pump here. That's the oil pump. Here's the pickup at the bottom. So this whole assembly will just lift out of here. The uh, output shaft for the front wheel drive will just pull out of the case and then this shaft with a bunch of the guts here will just lift out. Like 
so. Let me get this shift fork out. Slide it out. Like that. And then this shift fork down in the bottom here, kind of rotate it a little bit once you have the shaft out and it'll lift right out like that. And then once that is out, still a little bit of fluid left in here, drain that out. Set some rags down. Four ten mil bolts out. Pop off that flange. Heavy duty silicone in there. I get the rest of this assembly out. So the input shaft, there's another snap ring right here. So again, just take snap ring plier. So that's out, just slides out. And you can check in here for wear. And yeah, it's basically disassembled. So now we can clean everything up and start checking to see what's worn out. You can already kind of see a bit of a problem here. Down in the case, it looks like something's been rubbing on the case here from the input shaft. So that's not supposed to happen. And on the magnet, there's a bunch of filings and stuff. So. We'll have to get all this checked out, check all the bearings, check everything out, and see what's wrong. Alright, so we did find a couple of problems here. This collar, you can see the teeth are worn pretty bad on it. They're all angled. So what this does is your high-low in your transfer case. So those are worn and, yeah, starting to wear down a bit. But the biggest problem is that somebody was in here before to probably rebuild it. And this bearing right here, the input shaft bearing is the wrong one. So what is that what that is doing is allowing this input shaft to walk in and out of the case. So when it walks in, it's in mesh, when it goes back, it comes out of mesh and doesn't just grinds, it goes half in half out. So this one is supposed to have a 15 16 bearing on it, but it only has a 5 8 bearing. So we got the new bearing coming. We have a new one of these coming, new snap rings, and also new bushings for the shift forks. So we got to wait for those to get here, clean this all up, put in the parts washer, get all nice and clean, and then just reassemble it, and then we're good to go. All right, so we are back. We got our parts in for this. So here's the part number for the um, small parts. 
kit. So it has like the bushings and stuff in here, snap rings and everything. There's that. And I couldn't just get an individual bearing, so we had to get a whole rebuild kit, which was still pretty cheap. So there's all your seals. All the bearings. And there's the part number for that. So yeah, this is a 241 DLD transfer case with the 15 16 input shaft bearing. So let's start putting these parts in. So down in here. There is a thrust washer. Take that one out. Put a new one in. Also, if you take this shim off the top here, there's another thrust washer. Input shaft back in, thrust washer on, your shim back in, then this ring just slides into the groove, walk it around, right like that. All those are done. Get the old input shaft bearing out, just take a punch, punch it out. You see the difference in the proper one as opposed to the improper one. Now this will only install so far because it has the snap ring here. So it'll bottom out before it goes in too far. Also while we're back here, we get this back bearing out too. Just again, just has a snap ring. Take a flat screwdriver, pry out on it. Now, if you got the small parts kit, it comes with the snap ring for here. So we can just go ahead and discard that to get this bearing out. We also have new seals. So. Get it out. Same deal. Match up our new bearing. One. <clears throat> you can actually use the old bearing to put the new one in. You can tell when you're bottomed out because it won't go anymore and the sound will change. You can take your snap ring. These ones are a little stiffer to put in, but again, just walking around. changed now where the snap ring is you want the gap to be where the oil passage is at the bottom here so you can see right here 
there's an oil passage for oil to go up into the bearing you'll want to line your snap ring gap up with that so now that one's changed you can flip it over seal kit by the old seal green stuff on the outside is like a sealant so it should seal itself up as you go as you're putting it in and it just goes in until it's flush with the outer lip of the case. There we go, this bearing and seal is done. I can flip it over. shaft seal it, so uh, bearing in, again, just use the old one, to install the new one. Alright, so we got our bearing in, other bearing in, new seal on there. Now, sometimes you will possibly have to buff up this shaft a little bit so it'll go in the bearing, so I had to do that. So basically, just a fiber sandpaper wheel on a die grinder. And then it'll go right in. That slides in, everything moves. You pull it out all the way. And your snap ring. We got a bearing in, snap rings on, shaft is nice and free. So then for now, we can set this aside and we can prep this cover that goes on there. Is that seal? spring seal so there's a spring on the inside and a spring on the outside oh well, actually this kit came with two seals this one's the wrong one it's a hair too big this one's the proper one again it's like the other one you just tap it flush and then this one's good to go. Now clean up this mating surface here. And this one. There's no actual gasket for this so it comes together like from factory with just some silicone in it. So a lot, just enough to seal it up. If you don't want the silicone to smush into the transfer case and cause problems, you don't want it to fill up this oil.
you don't want to fill up this oil port right here because that oils the bearing and lines up with this hole over here. So just a little bit, make sure you get it around all the bolt holes. Around everything. slide over the input shaft like that. Make sure you line up your oil gallery with the hole that's there. And then since these bolts go all the way into the transfer case, we're also going to put some uh, thread sealer. squish them right tight yet until the silicone has a little bit of time to, to uh, set up or else you'll just squish it out of the flange so I'll just take them down just so they touch then let it sit there for probably like 10 minutes and then tighten them down While this is setting up, we'll go ahead and prep the other half. So we'll prep this half. See, we got another bearing down in here. Just punches out this way. So we'll go to the blocks of wood again. Pop that one out. new one just make sure you don't hit the center because you can warp the cage and everything but there that one is in this piece is ready to go it's also a caged needle bearing down in this end we we'll pop that out and just make sure we got the proper one for it which looks like we do in here these ones are a little trickier to get out. I usually just like bend them and break them out of there. So this one's being a little difficult, so I had to get the slide hammer out for it. Alright, so slide hammer wasn't working for us. So what we ended up having to do is take a Dremel tool and a carbide burr and just grind a little groove in the bearing outer shell and then kind of pry it out and grab it and bend it and pop it out and then break the cage and everything out of it but the new bearing is in it was also a little tricky to get in there just because you don't want to bend the cage on it because it is a super like it is kind of super thin so if you bend this this in a little bit then you're going to distort that and the bearing is going to be no good so what we did was uh, put the bearing itself in the freezer for like six, eight hours. 
and then took it to the press and pressed it in flush with a uh and then pressed it we took it to the press and then pressed it in all the way with a uh socket and like a flat piece of steel and she just pressed right in we had to make up some little washers so this would sit flat because it has that um bump in there for the oil passage so that's just silicone down there pop that off and then this half of the case is ready to go. So we'll set that aside, get this half set up again. So this half is good to go. So now we have to install the uh, collar and everything for the four wheel high and low, or the high low range, which is this one. And then this fork goes like so in here these bushings right here are non-serviceable so if you need to replace these bushings if they're worn out in yours you need to get a whole new fork these ones are fine the other ones are a little bit worn but we do have new bushings for that so that lines up over there and then this tab This tab goes into this slot right there, like that. Bring over this assembly. You don't need to put this back in if you took it out. It just goes in like so. You can see this ring here. That is your four wheel drive selector. It goes on so this narrow piece goes into the other sprag that locks this shaft to the actuator. So it's pretty simple. You just line it up like that. And then it just slides on like so. So when you go to put it in four wheel drive, this collar slides into there like that and locks that all as one shaft. But this shift fork does have replaceable bushings on it. So your kit will come with replaceable bushings, which look like this. They have little grooves in them. They're just kind of plastic. So all you do is you line the groove up. With the slot in the fork, and push them in right like that. So now this fork goes onto here like this. Make sure that slides in there in there, shafts in there, that'll go down in. So once you have all your silicone prepped up, then you will take your pump and slide it into the pickup tube, like so. Putting pressure on the pump will hold the pickup tube in. So when you come back around like this, You make sure you have to line that up. Get the splines lined up for the output shaft. Line up your shift fork. Line up your bearing. There we go. Now that's all lined up, but we can see the pump isn't sitting quite flat. So before we put the case on, we just have to make sure that it will fall down in, not fall down in, but sit down in where it's supposed to be.
right like that. So now we can go ahead and put some bolts in just to keep the two case halves together so they don't come apart. And we can also, that just keeps the, um, the, the silicone, it gives it a chance to skin up and um, yeah, it'll stay in place and won't lose out when you go to tighten it up all the way. But it shouldn't ooze out too, too much because like I said, you didn't put that much in it. So it should be perfectly fine. But just in case, you just want to tighten these up just so they're kind of snug and not reefing on them and tighten them up all the way yet. So there. Well that sets up. We will also just go around here and wash it off with a rag and get it ready to go. And then the other half of the housing, same deal, just wash it off with some brake clean and a rag. Now you notice on here, these four bolts, they will go all the way through the transfer case. So I let, you're gonna have to use some thread locker to keep the, uh, not locker, some thread sealant to keep them from leaking. Um, but you'll also notice the tabs on the pump, they go in these grooves here. And um, so yeah, you don't wanna use a lot of silicone or it will gum up everything in there. So we can go ahead and put some silicone on that as well. Same deal as with the other half, or, or with the other, the other part, you just go around each hole with this thin film and then smooth it out. Now we'll take this, slide it down the shaft. So that's lined up there. There, that'll clip down in like so. said we want to take our thread locker or not lockers our thread sealer put a little bit on here and then again same deal with these don't tighten them up all the way yet we got to make sure that the silicone sets up all right, I spared you the detail of uh, tightening all the bolts up. But after you got all the bolts tightened up, you can uh, grab the output shaft and kind of pull it out, because it'll be in a little bit. Pull it out and you'll see a groove for a snap ring right here. So that keeps the output shaft out. And what'll happen sometimes is this snap ring will break. So then when you're in two wheel drive, the shaft will slide in and come out of mesh with the, uh, with the gears and then it'll start grinding and do all kinds of bad things. So let's get this snap ring on and then our tailstock housing. We'll also change the seal in it. These snap rings can be a little bit of a pain in the butt to get on sometimes because they are pretty stiff. If you try to open them too far, you can distort them. So then they won't uh, they won't close all the way. Luckily, this kit comes with a bunch of them. So if you do do that, then there's uh, other ones. But you can see it popped into the groove. No more in and out play. So yeah, all that's left to do is put the tailstock on and the front drive hub for the um, front output shaft. So again, same deal. Clean this up, clean this up, a little bit of silicone, and uh, put her on. So again, I spared you the step of uh, tightening the four bolts up and changing the tailstock seal. Pretty self-explanatory for the tailstock. Um, you basically just pop the old seal off, pound the new one in. Um, so we're moving on to the output shaft for the front wheels. 
So there's this little seal that goes in here. Then you take your front drive flange, it slides on, put the nut in, or put the nut on, sorry. So we'll leave it in four high, go find our torque spec, and we'll be right back. So here we go, we've got it all torqued up. Torque spec is 148 foot-pounds for it. Um, so now this transfer case is ready to go back in service. So thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. And don't forget to like us on Facebook, follow us on um, Instagram, and subscribe on YouTube. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.